Grayson and Stephanie met at art school, although they studied in different faculties. Grayson had been involved in music since childhood, which wasn't surprising, given his creative family background. His father was a violinist at the conservatory, and his mother taught children to play the piano at the music school. Grayson used to spend his spare time at his mother's music school, which was like a palace with its columns, beautiful staircase and mouldings. The sound of different instruments could be heard from behind every door. Grayson chose the guitar and studied it with great enthusiasm. He had no doubts about his future path. Things were different for Stephanie. She grew up practically as an orphan with living parents. Her mother had abandoned her father, left Stephanie to be raised by her grandmother and moved to the capital. She was supposed to come back and raise her daughter after earning money for a few years, but she never returned. Stephanie's mother got married and had children in her new family, a boy and a girl. Not once in many years did she visit Stephanie, ask about her problems or offer any help. Stephanie could only rely on herself and her grandmother, and they lived mostly on the old woman's modest pension. Stephanie's mother sent remittances from time to time, but they were rare and irregular. The girl had a part-time job in high school, babysitting for her neighbor's toddlers and walking dogs. If she had any free time, she spent it reading books, which she loved. She couldn't afford to buy new editions, but the internet and the library helped her out. That's why, after graduating from school, Stephanie wanted to become a librarian. Stephanie's classmates tried to find suitors by attending events at the Aeronautical and Medical College, but Stephanie met Grayson by chance at her own college. After a lecture, Stephanie had some questions to discuss with the teacher. Therefore, she was walking back along the now empty corridor when she heard the sound of a guitar. The playing was so magical to her that she could not resist looking into the auditorium where she saw a handsome dark-haired guy on stage playing alone, apparently rehearsing. Stephanie listened, and when the sounds died down she applauded. Grayson bowed playfully. Soon they started spending all their spare time together, and that summer they went on a real expedition to remote villages in their homeland. They recorded local folklore. Stephanie wrote down the words of the songs, and Grayson captured the melodies. Later, this came in handy for their diploma works. By the time the young couple graduated from college, Stephanie had already become a part of Grayson's family. When the couple decided to get married, Grayson's parents were thrilled. Not only was Stephanie modest and hard-working, but she and Grayson also shared many interests. When they were together, they never ran out of things to talk about. The wedding was held in June, when the nights are so short that they seem to fly by. They quickly found work. Grayson became a teacher at an art school and Stephanie got a job at the same library she had loved since childhood. They rented an apartment and spent their spare time shopping for various trinkets to decorate their cosy home. However, the idyllic life began to change about six months later. Stephanie's work schedule didn't match Grayson's, and soon she started coming home later and later. One day, when Grayson forgot some important notes and went home at 9.30 in the morning, he found that Stephanie was not there, although the library opened much later. Although he trusted Stephanie, he was concerned and asked for an explanation. Did you go out this morning? I returned for forgotten papers and no one was home, Grayson asked Stephanie. I went to the market, Stephanie replied. Oh, that's good. By the way, I forgot to ask yesterday. Why did you come home so late? Continued Grayson. Margaret is sick. She has a small child and needed help. It turns out she has a bad heart, so she won't be healthy any more. Apparently, Margaret needed support all the time. She asked Stephanie to babysit her son while she was at the doctor's office. 
or to help prepare for her birthday party. In short, one thing or another. Grayson had never been jealous, but suddenly he felt that he was no longer the first priority in Stephanie's life. Sometime later, coming out of the entrance in the morning, he saw Margaret jogging in a beautiful tracksuit. She jogged past him, waving her hand, and Grayson was so confused that he did not even call out to her. In the evening when he came home, he found Stephanie wasn't at home again. Her number was unavailable. Then he looked up Margaret's phone number and called. "'Hi, Margaret, is Stephanie with you?' asked Grayson, afraid of hearing that his hunch would turn out to be true. "'What makes you think that?' wondered Margaret. "'I haven't seen her in ages.' "'That's strange. How's your heart? Don't you need any help any more?' "'My heart?' Margaret was finally confused, but immediately began to figure out what was going on. "'My heart, dear Grayson, is as healthy as a horse's, and as for Stephanie, she's spreading lies.' Grayson said goodbye to Margaret and hung up. Whatever the meaning of Stephanie's strange behaviour, he was not going to discuss his wife with anyone. He did not ask other acquaintances did not say anything to his parents. He decided to follow his wife himself, to find out where she used to go. It was also very unpleasant and humiliating, but Grayson could not do otherwise. It was not in his character to make a scandal without understanding the situation. Besides, he didn't want to look like a gullible fool either. He took the day off and pretended to go to work as usual, while he went not far from the house and waited. Half an hour later, Stephanie came out. She was obviously in a hurry to go somewhere. If she had called a cab and left, he would have lost sight of her, but his wife went to the bus stop. Grayson managed to follow her unnoticed and then boarded the same crowded bus, only through another door. Stephanie made it almost to the final stop. This caused Grayson to be even more surprised. Why was Stephanie in this practically suburban area? The young woman walked confidently down the road that led to the wooded area. Grayson had never been here before, but soon he saw a nursing home for people with disabilities in the distance. Stephanie went inside. Twenty minutes later, Grayson opened the front door and told the female guard on duty that he wanted to wait for his wife, Stephanie. Stephanie is your wife, the woman said sympathetically. I feel so sorry for her. She's so responsible and conscientious, putting in so much effort, but there's hardly any result. What do you mean? Grayson was confused. I just got back from a business trip and I haven't had a chance to talk to her. I decided to come get her. Well, her father is here. He was an alcoholic, and he also had problems with his spine. Stephanie is here from morning until night taking care of him. When she found out what had happened to her father, he had already been here for about a month, and bed sores had appeared. So she started washing him every day, lubricating the sore spots and taking him out for walks. Here they are, by the way, look. In the distance... Stephanie appeared pushing a wheelchair with a thin elderly man who had an unhealthy bluish complexion that indicated chronic alcoholism. When she saw Grayson, she froze in place and turned pale. Her husband quickly approached her and asked, Why didn't you tell me anything? How did you know? Stephanie babbled. Were you following me? Did you think I was cheating on you? Grayson squeezed her hand tightly and said, Let's go outside and talk. Let me help you with the wheelchair. They settled down on a bench under a big tree in the large area surrounding the nursing home. The elderly man covered his eyes and soon dozed off. Tears streamed down her face when Stephanie began to talk. You see, I always knew that your family was different from mine. You're cultured and... Kind parents accepted me so well. While I have a mother who doesn't need me, and a father who traded everything for a bottle, I was 100% sure that if your family knew I was the daughter of an alcoholic, 
They wouldn't have let you marry me. Grayson resented her words and said, What nonsense! Your father is one thing, and you are quite another. Wait, Stephanie interrupted. Let me tell you the whole story. It wasn't difficult for me to keep silent about my father, because he didn't live with us. I only remember his constant drinking bouts and scandals with my mother from my distant childhood. There wasn't any extra money at home because he drank it all away. He never stayed at a job for long, would work for two or three weeks and then get drunk. After my mum, I knew he was with one woman and then another, but they were such ladies that you couldn't look at them without pity. I hadn't seen him in years, and the news came through mutual acquaintances. One day he was coming home at night. Some bandits took his money, beat him up badly and kicked his spine. I could have refused to take care of him, as he didn't pay alimony or help in any way. But I came and I saw him here alone, and I felt sorry for him. Grayson held his wife tightly and kissed her. After their walk, he helped his father-in-law to his room and into bed. Grayson realized that this room was like a second home to Stephanie. Her cup was on the nightstand, and her slippers were under the bed. However, Grayson couldn't allow his wife to continue spending so much time every day taking care of her father. That evening, he consulted with his parents, who took the situation to heart. Grayson didn't reveal the real truth for Stephanie's silence, but simply asked for their help. He knew that his mother had connections in medical circles, and a suitable option was quickly found. Stephanie's father was transferred to a good clinic, where comprehensive treatment was started, including treatment for alcohol addiction. The hospital was located in the centre, which was very convenient and could be reached in just 15 minutes by foot. Stephanie's father began to feel himself much better, and the doctor's prognosis were optimistic. Grayson and Stephanie swore to each other that they would no longer have any secrets from each other. Her in-laws continued to treat Stephanie with the same kindness, and she felt that she now had a strong family that would be with her in both sorrow and joy.